Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lunchtime Detroit Lions Talk. It's brought to you by the Detroit Lions on the Prowl and the Belly Up Sports Network. Today, I have a special co-host, and, and uh, we appreciate you coming in. Welcome in, welcome in, Jeremy Reisman. Thanks for having me, man. Always good to be here. It is. It's 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 a lot of fun, and, and, and he's my pinch hitter just in case anybody gets hurt, sick, dies. You know, that type of thing. No, I'm kidding, but thank you. We really, <laughs> really appreciate that. Today, we're going to talk with Jeremy about a lot of things that happened yesterday. We're also going to get to your comment cards. We're going to get to the Wall of Fame, question of the day, all these things. But first, let's get this thing started right now. What are you waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. And here we go with a talk with Jeremy Reisman today uh, from Pride of Detroit. Um, I love that. I love the website, to be honest. I steal most of your stuff every day. But, uh, just <laughs> letting you know. <laughs> you and know the POD podcast, or POD cast, as, yes. as, as you guys call it. The three Amigos, as Deuce Staley calls it. <laughs> That's right. But anyway, let's talk about the restructure with Jared Goff first. Um what are your thoughts about that restructure? It, I think some Lions think that that means that we're committed to golf for a longer term. I don't see that. I mean, I don't think it's a terrible out in year. In, in uh, I think we got him for two years for sure. I thought that before anyway. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, I'm right there with you. Um, it, it definitely locks them in for, for two years unless they somehow trade him after the first yeah. year. But yeah. I don't really see that as a viable possibility because if he's going to have any trade value after this season i think the lines are going to want to keep him anyways so yeah it locks him into two years it puts a little extra dead money if you want to get rid of him after two years so now after year two it would have cost lines nothing to cut him now it'll cost him 10 million 10 million in dead money i don't really think it's that much i don't really think it's that big of a deal as long as you kind of manage the rest of the cap okay over the next two years i don't think that's going to hurt the line too much plus if the cap goes up as projected it doesn't matter right and, and it's going to get eaten up in, in the money that we gain. Exactly. Exactly. And it's very um, smart. It, I, th I think it is a, a savvy move. I also think it, it was a necessary move. I don't think they really mm -hmm. had much of a choice to be completely honest. You, you've seen how they operated this, this off season. They've cut seven guys. They made Nick Williams take a pay cut. They've signed a whole bunch of guys to one year, 1. Yep. 1.5 million type of deals. Yep. They've been being very, very cost effective with how they've approached free agency and they still needed more cap space because yeah. they, they barely had enough to really sign their, their rookie class. So they needed some extra room to not only sign a few more guys before we get to the draft, but to carry over some money in, into the regular season so that they can be prepared in case of an emergency. And I know a lot of people would rather not kick the money down the road and, and, and take your lumps this year. And, and I, I understand that. I know the Lions probably feel very similarly, but this was something that they just really had to do. So uh, I, I don't really see the, the, the point in the backlash there. It was, it was, I, think, I think just philosophically, um, it, it's not something that the Lions wanted to do. It's not something that fans wanted to do. But if you look at the book specifically, it was something they just had to do. And it's not going to hurt them that much. I don't think it's any different. I, I really don't. In that, in that the year after, I think it's the fourth year. It's only $5 million. Right. You know, it goes down to $5 million to yep. cut him. Um, they could still trade him. If they wanted to, I don't think it's their move. I really don't. I do think it changes some things at seven for the Lions. I, 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 I thought they had a chance to maybe go after a Trey Lance or somebody if he was there. Now I'm thinking uh, it's a good possibility we have a trade going on. I, I think that that there's some teams out there like New England, Carolina. You know, there, there there's teams that maybe they want to jump another team. Maybe Carolina, they want to jump them for a quarterback that they think they're going to take right after us. I think it still sets us up for a pretty good uh, trade back situation. Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah. I, I mean, it's definitely still on the board. Um, I, I would, I would still consider quarterback an, an option here. I mean, having a guy sit for two years isn't ideal, but it's not unheard of. The, the Packers sure love to do something like that with their quarterbacks. And we've heard Anthony, Anthony Lynn say he, he wants to sit a rookie quarterback for at least a year. So um, I, I think it's still on the board. I always thought it was less likely than I think other people did. Um, there were some early quotes from Dan Campbell that said like, you know, I want to build a foundation before we get a quarterback. I, I want to make sure we have a full team. I don't want to throw a guy in and, and have, you know, him in, in a rough situation because that can kind of hurt a, a rookie quarterback's mentality. 
Um, but it, it's still on the table, but you're right. Like, I don't think this move at all hurts their ability to trade down. If there is one of those top four quarterbacks that drops to seven, the Lions should consider him. But you, as you said, the Panthers are picking right behind the Lions. And maybe, maybe I mean, even a Bears team might call come calling. And I don't know how eager you'd Bears be to, would have to, to trade really down with give the Bears. A lot to 20. Yeah, they would. And, and you know. That's a I, long it, drop. It's a long drop, and I don't know how much you really want to trade in the division like that. But, yeah, the Patriots, too, they're, they're definitely in there. And maybe someone falls in love with Mac Jones, the fifth quarterback. Uh, yeah, maybe even San draft. Francisco. I yeah, don't think their situation sure. is, is completely uh, <laughs> yeah. sunshine and rainbows no, over there either. <laughs> um, and yeah, there are certainly reports out there that they were looking for a quarterback this offseason. So, yeah, I, I think it's still on the table. I think the fact that the Lions are unlikely but, but still possible – to, to draft a quarterback, I don't think that impacts their ability to trade down because if, if teams thought they were going to take a quarterback, wouldn't they try to jump the lines too? So um, mm-hmm. I, I don't really get that narrative that this would hurt their, yeah, their trade down ability. Either. At three, I got it. Three makes sense. Well, yeah. Last year it made sense right. because there's really, you know, lions are it at three. I don't think there was any chance of, you know, somebody trying to jump us. I mean, you know what I'm right. saying? Or, <laughs> you know what I mean? There wasn't many teams before us. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So I don't, I don't think we had much leverage last year. But this year, I do. I think I do think we have thing. I think there's something with New England. I don't know. I think that 15 pick is probably where we end up. But yeah, I, I mean, the tricky part is really just making sure a quarterback slides to Detroit because you know yeah, it way, may not, may not happen. Way, yeah, I think there, there's been a lot of hype of, of these four guys. Trey Lance had a really good pro day, and I know pro days are pro days. They're they're scripted. They're, there's no defense, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, a lot of mock drafts, and, and I don't know how much a, of a reality mock draft, drafts are reflecting, but they have those top four quarterbacks going in the top five picks. And if that's the case, lines might be in trouble there. Or, like I said, maybe someone falls. Is it in Cincinnati love in the first five picks? Uh, I believe so. They're yeah, I think they're going somewhere. quarterback. Yeah. Jets might. <clears throat> Might, Some, someone gonna... might trade up there though you know someone yeah that's true that's five. true i think cincinnati's a good spot to trade up to but yeah. you're talking if you're talking 15 with uh new england and no and that quarterback is there at seven with detroit there's a much uh less compensation that they have to give up to detroit than they would have to to cincinnati for sure no question and I, I just think that that's a very it's a, it's quite a leap up so we'll see how that goes do you think now that that uh what position do you think we draft at the number seven pick or what, I mean, what do you want to see happen? Let's, let's go with ew. what do you want to see happen? Because I, I mean, got in, mine. <laughs> in an ideal world, there's like a perfect defensive prospect out there, really any of the defensive positions, but I don't think there is. I mean, wow. I'm a little bit higher on Micah Parsons than I think a lot of people are, but yeah, there you definitely have to do a, a deep dive on his you know, background, on his off seven. the field issues. And, <laughs> and yeah, there's a question about the value of an off ball linebacker at seven. I personally think it, it could be worth it. Um, but I'm, I'm going Slater, the offensive tackle from Northwestern. Yeah. Yeah. Because then you kick big V back into guard and look at that old line now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think they're, they're a player away on that offensive line. So yeah, Slater or, or, uh, Sewell, Sewell. Or, I doubt you know. Sewell falls, but if he, if you're yeah. right and all those quarterbacks go, then you've got those wide receivers and then you got pits. It's a possibility. Sewell falls. Sure. No but question. You never I, know. But I, I, I do think we have to talk wide receivers here because in terms of need and in terms of likelihood that there's at least one of those top three guys there, it's almost a guarantee, I think, that, that one of those guys is there and it makes a lot I think of sense so too. too. Um, I, whether, and I don't, I don't really have a preference right now and maybe really? I will by a month, but like Waddle, Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith, they're, they're all playmakers. They're all huge. And I know a lot of people are freaking about Devontae Smith's body, but listen, everything that we've seen from him on the field suggests that he might be the outlier. He might be the guy that can be 170 and still burn the crap out of every corner in this league. Because I mean, you just look, I, I know you don't want to put too much faith in one game, but that national championship game, mm-hmm. just one half of he it separated was himself there. Phenomenal. I mean, Everyone in, in the building knows he's the one guy that they got because Waddle's out. Everyone knows that stop him and maybe you have a chance in this game. And they couldn't. And, they and, couldn't. and it's, not, it's not like he's going up against scrubs in the national championship game. He's a playmaker. He's a guy who's going to play with the chip on his shoulder because of the whole size thing. He's a guy who, in terms of his personality, coaches will say, this guy puts in the work. This guy does everything you, that, that you need to succeed. I'm not going to bet against Devontae Smith despite his size. That's I like all. I like Pitts. I like yeah. uh, you know if we're gonna go for for a threat, that dude, that dude's amazing. <laughs> he is. He, his it's catch radius, t- his speed for his size. Ooh. Oh yeah, 
it's just going to be a tough sell on the Lions fan base going another tight end in the top 10. I don't, you know what? I, I, I'm hoping that they don't care what the fan base thinks. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Because I, if, I you start, if you start, if you start doing that, that I, I, I don't see how you can build a good team. Yeah. If you think that's your guy, go get him. Yeah. hundred percent. Know, who cares? I mean, went and got Hawkinson. I think Hawkinson's a, a really good tight end, a pro bowl tight end now. So come on, man. You know, and, and he can double as a wide receiver. I think he's a big slot as well. I, th- I think he can do other things than just tight end. Sure. But you put him and Hawkinson out there, holy cow. Yes. Yeah, same and, time, what a I mean, And your head coach is Dan Campbell, so you know he likes tight ends. Yeah, he does. He <laughs> does. All right, we signed a couple of people yesterday. Um, we signed Thor, and then um, that goes with Captain America Brockers, who can also wield the uh, hammer. Um, but no, we signed Alex Anzalone and uh, Damian Ratley yesterday. Um, Anzalone's, uh, he's had shoulder issues, but last year he played like 16 games. Yep. I think he fits best as a middle linebacker, but I'm not sure how that works with Tavai. Uh, he's faster. I think he can cover a little bit. Uh, if he's going downhill, if we're in a one gap scheme rather than a two gap scheme, I think this kid works really, really well. Um, if not, eh, you know, it's a one year deal. It's no big deal, but I like the kid. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it makes a, a lot of sense. Lines really don't have a lot of depth there at off-ball linebacker. And, yeah, you were staring down the the, the possibility of starting Jelani Tavai, which I think we all agree by now is probably not the best situation. Anzalone is going to know the scheme. He's going to bring some coverage um, abilities and starting ability. And, and yeah, he kind of started to fall out of favor there in the Saints because I don't think he's very good in, in, in run defense. But, you know, this, this is a defense that's going to be a lot speedier. This is going to be a lot um, – more, I think, focused on on stopping the past, and Anzalone is an upgrade over pretty much everyone they've got ex- aside from Jamie Collins. So I think it's, I think he steps D in immediately. That, it's a D line for me that mm. makes the linebackers. So it's yep. it's like if if you can get pressure and you can and you can you know, like swallow up the offensive line, taking two guys. Penasini is a big deal in that, and then the linebackers can just shoot the gap and get the running back or the quarterback or whomever if they're blitzing and then in coverage, you know, I, I think that the, our defensive line, we could actually play a four, three scheme right now. Sure. Yeah. I'm not sure we will. I've heard right. we're going three, three, five, but <clears throat> yeah. uh, I don't know. I love a four, three better than a three, four. It's just <laughs> my opinion, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, they, they've got a bunch of varied talent there on the on the defensive line now. I think Michael, Michael Brockers is going to play a huge part in that. Um, yes, he will. Great and, against and, the run. Yeah, yeah. That, like you said, that that that's the kind of guy that's going to make your linebackers look good. You got John Penasini. You you're bringing back Nick Williams, with, which is a surprising move. But I mean, he he was probably their best defensive tackle in terms of pass rush last year. He, he's okay. He's not good in a in a. See, last year we ran that two gap system where it's like he has to kind of read and react. I don't mm-hmm. think he's good like that. I, I think he's better just going after, you know, taking care of his responsibility, that one gap, shooting yep. the gap and going in and being more aggressive. I think this defense is going to be much more aggressive. I They haven't come out and said it, but they have gotten a lot of players like um, the defensive end they just got from uh, Atlanta. Same yeah, thing. Charles Harris, yeah. He's really good at a one gap. And, and even Sheila Ford Hamp just said, hey, get the quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Love to hear that. Love to, I know that I know fans love to hear that. Just go get the quarterback. Not not go set the edge. Not go make sure no one runs outside of you. Just go get the quarterback. Right. I think they're keeping it simple. Yeah. You know, I think they're That's keeping it simple. Uh what about Ratley? Um, another fast wide receiver for me, deep threat. Uh I, I like the kid. I don't, I don't think I don't have anything wrong. And he is one of the players that is, hasn't had an injury history. I don't know if yeah. you know, but uh, we, we really like injured players. We'd love that. And it's, it's a <laughs> tradition here in Detroit. And, yeah. I mean, they're, they're just, I think at this point, they're just kind of rolling the dice with a bunch of these guys that, that weren't given full chances where they, where they were at previously sixth round pick from the Browns. Um, John Dorsey is a guy who drafted him. So I'm, I'm sure he had a bit of yeah. a pull in bringing him here mm-hmm. to Detroit. Um, like you said, another, another speed guy. I think the difference here is he's played a little bit in the slot. Um, yes. Not a ton. I would say like a, a 70, 30 split or a 60, 40 split in, in his limited time on the field there. And so you've got another speed guy, maybe a guy that can contend with, uh, um, you know, for the, the punt return job. He doesn't have a ton of experience there, but he certainly has the the capabilities there. And, and yeah, I mean, do I expect this guy to come in and, and be the slot guy 
the starting slot? Probably not. Um, he's probably wide receiver four or five if he even makes a team. But they're rolling the dice on a bunch of these fast guys that have the athleticism to play the the, the position and then just giving him a shot in, in kind of a shallow depth chart here and, and hoping they, they find at least one diamond in the rough there and, and they can turn it into a productive season. Then maybe if he has a really productive season, they can either resign him next year or uh, cash in on a compensatory pick uh, because it does seem like they're starting to play that game where they're, they're, they're trying to load up them on a bunch of I like picks. that. And I like it. Yeah, I mean, it Holmes makes a lot of sense. has been really good with late round picks, but you have to have a lot. It's like a lottery ticket. You buy the more you buy, the more chances you get. Exactly. You know, and I think that's what we're doing. Also, I, I like the fact that we got all these guys on one year deals. There's no real commitment. It's kind of proven on every single one of these guys, but it shows us a little bit about what he wants for this team. We want speed, speed, and more speed at, yep. at the wide receiver position. And as we build through the draft, which I think that's what we're going to do, all these positions will be filled by probably much better talented players mm -hmm. than we have right now. 2021 is probably not going to be the funnest time for Lions fans, but you start looking at 2023. I think that's the, the space and time that we're going to start building that core and, and building through the draft. And that's what I see here. I see yeah. he's feeling a team that he want uh, of positions, uh, you know, or attributes that he wants. Right. Not necessarily the player that he might want, but I don't want to say that too loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Like it's clear through all these one-year deals that this team is not intending on building through free agency, which I think we can all agree is, is smart, especially where this team is at. Um, you, you use free agency to plug holes, use free agencies to maybe give you that one final push to put you over the edge. Yes. But if you're in the position where the lines are at, you're not building a foundation through the draft or through, I'm sorry, through free agency. No. Um, the, the only move that, that could potentially be viewed that way is, is the Brocker thing. And I think he's and only was a trade. It was a trade. It didn't cost yeah. him anything. Uh, you know, 2023 20, seventh is essentially nothing. Yes, nothing. And then they uh, gave him a brand new contract that basically, you know, says you're not going to cost us much of anything in the first year. We're probably making a pretty significant uh, commitment to you in year two. And then year three is probably one we're going to throw out the window, to be honest. Yep. Uh, and so a two year commitment to a guy that, that's there to say, Hey, this is who you, this team is going to be going for. This is the kind of mentality we're going to take. And I'm going to give you a couple of good years of play as well. So that and he's a leader in the locker room. He's a leader Absolutely. that can teach these young guys when we get them. <clears throat> I, I think he's really good for the team. I yeah. Do. Because I mean, well, now and, and in, in a year. And, and and it's it's smart to have a player like that because you know I know there are probably a lot of people that that want this team to tank as hard as possible in 2021. I um, think they're going to get their wish. They they, they are, <laughs> they're they're not going to be a good team, but I don't think I don't think tank is the right word for it because I I, I think one do you think Dan Campbell is, is really excited to go out there and start losing games? Absolutely. No, not. I don't. But I think that I think they have a plan. I see the plan. I really sure. do. I, I yeah. mean, actually, before with, with uh, Quinn and Patricia, you, you kind of saw where they were going with it. It just wasn't working. Right. You just, right. just you kind of seen they work. had a plan. But this plan, I, I like it a lot better. I, I think they're – one thing I'll give Quinn credit for is that offensive line. I, I yeah. think he did a good yeah. job on that. I, I think some of his players that he drafted aren't too bad if they other – stay healthy that is the one word that that's yeah, the yeah. one phrase yeah. in detroit lions vernacular uh, that i can't stand <laughs> when healthy these guys yeah. are great On yeah, paper, well, you know as long as everyone stays healthy they've uh, got a great okay, that's not and healthy. then you sign people that are have previous <clears throat> injuries i don't right. like that about this regime right now that is the one thing that i'm i'm saying i, I don't like i kind of don't like that you but know. but again, I, I think I think they're they're doing that strategically, right? Like they're doing it because those players are coming cheap. Those players are that coming, makes sense, and, and, and they're only signing one on one year deals. So again, it, it's sense. just it's rolling the dice. It's saying, hey, I know we're, a lot of these guys are injured. Let's see if they can make it through the season. If they can, we just got ourselves a heck of a bargain. And and to go back to my original point, like they they don't want to throw in the towel completely in 2021 because how does that look for this organization how does it look for the rookies coming in what kind of tone are you setting when you're saying hey rookies come in here get all excited to play and then we're going to go two and 15 or 14 or whatever however many games the lines are going to play this year um yeah, 17 not, yeah. i mean this team this team is trying to build a culture and and for in year one for you to be like eh, we're not going to try that's that's not a great that's not a great precedent to set for this coaching staff that's supposed to be all excited. No, and so, so honestly, what they did is they went out and got a bunch of people that have talent, 
Yeah. But, or they have one attribute that are really, really good at. Like, I let's take Brashad Perryman for, for sure. an example. He is very fast. I mean, one guy had him clocked up 4.19, 40. He's a 4.245, uh, I think, officially. That dude is fast. He can't catch the ball, but he's fast. <laughs> You know, but I'm saying there are there's good points with these guys, and then there's that bad point with these guys. Sure. You know, and Terrell Williams is good if he's healthy. Right. You know, you don't right. know what you're going to get in him. Yep. Uh, but the thing is, if all these players, um, if all these players play well, we have a chance of winning maybe seven games. I'm going to make seven and ten or something. Yeah. You know, and be competitive in most games. I don't think you're going to see him, you know, I don't see, I don't think you're going to see a Dan Campbell team quit ever. Right. Ever. And if one player does, I think he's gone. Right. Right. I really do. Yeah. And I think he's not going to stand for that, but I think you have players that, well, while if everything goes perfect, we could have a decent season, but in Detroit, nothing really goes that way. So <laughs> um, I think we're looking at uh, probably a, not a, not a great season, even yeah. though they're going to try, I mean, they're going to give a hundred percent. They're going to try to be competitive, but there are glaring weaknesses in a lot of the players that they've signed and, and glaring holes that, that that remain unfilled too. So I, I mean, I'm with you. I don't, I, don't, I don't think this is a talented roster right now. I think they're, I don't either. They're, they're in trouble if, if they're trying to, you know, win the division this year, but at the same time, no, like, I just think, division I don't year. think they're trying to throw away the season. I, I don't think, I don't that. either. I don't either, but I don't think that. And the one thing I the one thing I worried about was Jared Goff, and the reason I say that is because number one, he gets traded here for Stafford, uh, fan base half and half kind of on him. Yeah, uh, they mostly view him as a stopgap. The thing is, though, you have to give him something, right? You right. know, you have to give him some kind of a running game, some kind of a, a uh, you know, passing game. You have to sign some people or, or draft some people that he can throw to because it is an audition for him. Sure, you know, and and I think that that for me th that would be the only thing wrong with this type of a thing you should have got a, a number one wide receiver you know and they might they, draft, they get that but, in a draft yeah you know, exactly. maybe they do um but yeah i mean i think you can kind of extrapolate that point to a lot of players you know there there are a lot of players that i think a lot of lions fans are banking on hey this coaching staff is going to turn them around. Tracy Walker is going to get turned around yep. under this coaching yep. staff. Jeff Okuda is going to get turned around. Well, you need to surround those guys with players too. Like they need to support a cast. Is Jeff Okuda look going to look any good if, you know, the opposite corner is just giving up 200 yards a game or no. is, he's not getting the proper safety help or he's not getting a pass rush. That was like, no. one I heard too is Patrick Sertain. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the second or something like that in, in mm -hmm. the draft as a yeah. corner. Um, real speedy guy, uh, something like that. I think honestly, wouldn't be a terrible pick. I, we got a warrior, uh, at, at the other corner right now. We don't really have a slot corner really. Right. But my opinion has been almost since we drafted Okuda that I think he'd be, he'd be a better safety than he would a, a corner. Hmm. So I, if I, I have, move I him to say come to that yet, but well, I'm just saying that's kind of what I see, but they got a couple yeah. of years to see if they can turn him around as, as a corner. But uh, yeah. if you get certain, I think that that's a, that's a bigger possibility going forward that, that solidifies that safety position, I think. And then sure. you have him and uh, a warrior at the corners, but that's just, it Maybe it's way too early, like you said, but yeah. I, I think in the end of it all, maybe, I don't know. We, we haven't seen enough of Okuda to really, judge yeah, in, in a exactly. defense he'll understand exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah I, I don't know about i don't know about the whole thing but what, what do you think honestly what do you think the year is going to be when we start to contend i mean for the division for playoffs and, and maybe going forward in the playoffs yeah i mean i, I think i'm i'm with you in circling that 2023 season um mm -hmm. you, like you said they're, they're 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 intending on building through the draft and right now they have six draft picks for for 2021 and that's that's not enough it's not no, to, to it's really not. turn things around on a dime and and you never really want to be relying on rookies to to be the ones that push so you know you're hoping those guys break out in 2022 and again you're probably only looking at three or four starters if 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 you play all your cards right if if you kind of nail everything because you know we're talking about high first and second and, and third round picks and you got that extra third at the end of the third round um but beyond that i think you're you're kind of throwing darts a little bit and so you're you're hoping for maybe rotational players in the fourth and fifth round there so by 2020 
two, you're, you're, you're getting those guys maybe at their peak. Maybe they're still coming along, maybe bringing in some free agencies now that the cap is a little more freed up. Um, but, you know, maybe, maybe you can contend for a wild card in 2022 if, if everything goes right. But I think in terms of like being a true contender, in terms of being a, a team that could win the division, maybe even win a playoff game, I think 2023 is probably the earliest. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me too. That's what I was thinking as well. Um, on the radar, is there anybody on the radar right now that uh, you think that the Lions might bring in? I mean, I've heard uh, Quan uh, was a, I can't remember his last name. Uh, <laughs> I'm in good terms at this, of, really. I, yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I, I don't have any names circled just because I think I think they're going to go the the very basic kind of bargain bin route. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I think, think anyone that too. thinks that like maybe they cleared up golf so that they can get this big signing, I don't think that's the plan. I don't think that's I don't what think that's doing. the plan either. I think, I think they I think want more money for the season. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, you know, I, I think a lot of people maybe are looking around at Sammy Watkins, a guy that, that still hasn't signed anywhere and, and yeah. has some history with both the Rams and, and John Dorsey, I believe. I um, wanted him when he for when he was coming out in the draft. Right, right. But Everybody again, did. another he, injured guy. Uh, he so, well. Oh, he's perfect then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, he, he could – the. The issue with him is I just I don't know what his price tag is. I don't know if the injury right. stuff is going to drive him down to a one year five million dollar deal. If that's the case, maybe the Lions want to take a shot at that, or if he's a I guy don't that's see more him as a number for... one though. Yeah, he, he I might just not. Don't. Be, but, I just but, don't. But who is right now in the Lions roster? I think I think he's closer to a number one than anyone they've they've currently got. That's true. Um, it, could, it could be. I I just don't know. I and another question I was going to have. What other cuts do you think? I got one cut I think they still can make, um, and that's either Nick Bodden or um, uh, the other guy, Jason Cabinda. I don't think they're carrying two fullbacks unless they're yeah. trans transforming Cabinda back into a linebacker that we right. don't know about. And 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 Josh Hill can play a little a little fullback as well. Yeah, so. he can. Yeah, um, you can. The, there's, I, I think I, I agree. There's not necessarily the 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 necessity for two guys there. Um, in terms of like saving money, there just there really isn't a ton of options out there. I know a lot of people have thrown out Kerry on Johnson's name, and, and maybe with yeah. the signing of Jamal Williams, that's a possibility. I, I think, think that so. I mean, I think he's I, cheap I, enough I this to, year; it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. I think you only save about two million, and, and now they aren't up against the cap like they were before. And and we talked to Deuce Staley, and he seemed pretty complimentary of of Kerry on. So I I think I think their running back room is is good. Maybe I even too. I, I, I think you like can't it. you can't cut Kerry on just because of the injury situation, and sure. you, you never know who's going to go down i mean we had swift down for a while last year yep. and then jamal williams comes in who's his backup well then it's carry on and that's okay yeah. i'm okay with that exactly that's you know? that's a pretty good one-two punch right there even if your your top guy goes down obviously yeah. no one wants that to yeah. happen to swift because he's the best running back they have by by a pretty large margin but at the same time um if if you've got a good running game if you've got a good offensive line sometimes it doesn't quite matter who's there in the backfield. Um, and, and you've got two guys that, that have been starters behind him. So um, a lot of, a lot of folks thought we could restructure flowers, but I was, th I looked at that and I don't see any money that you can really save this year. I thought that was our, I thought that was a, a weird one for me. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's got a pretty high salary, so you could theoretically split that over the following years. The problem is that you already have a lot of guarantees in those, in those following yeah, seasons. Yeah. So if he's I got a fourteen too. million dollar salary. You could cut that down to thirteen million, or you could cut that down by thirteen million, make it a one million dollar salary. But then you're talking about adding another, um, what is that, four or five million to twenty twenty two and twenty twenty three. Yeah. And he's a guy that's already at a cap hit of twenty three and twenty four million essentially for those two years. So you're yeah. adding a ton of money, a ton of more dead cap, um, basically committing to him maybe through the finality of his contract through 2023. And I'm not sure you want to do that sure for a guy that was probably right now either. Yeah. They don't, they, they really don't anymore. And that's, that's what made golf such the easy restructure is because you mm -hmm. saved a ton, you saved $15 million. That's a lot of money. That's, that's five, six, seven free agents. You could potentially sign with that given how and much lines are spending on those guys. What are the positions in this the last one before we go to other things here? Uh, but what is what are the positions of need still for the Lions in your opinion? Uh, I think it starts in the secondary right now. Um, they, they, you said, you said it yourself. There's no nickel corner on this roster right now. I think they need more depth behind the, the essentially two guys that they have in Oruari and, and Okuda because I don't think they're they're eager to drop Mike Ford out there in any sort of. You know, I, I kind of think Mike Ford would be okay at the slot, to be honest with it's you. It's possible. Mike um, Ford has really shown a lot in the last uh, couple of years that he's, he's been, been there. Yeah, you, consistent. 
he's been he's been better, I think, as as an injury replacement than maybe people give him credit for. I, mm-hmm. I'd still like to see more depth there. And then safety, I don't know. I don't know how yeah, excited Lions fans would be to, to start Harris. Will Harris. <laughs> uh, not a lot of people, I imagine. So um, it makes sense. The Lions are, are are looking at that position in free agency a little bit. So I expect at least one signing there. May, probably two. Maybe maybe. Probably not three, but um, maybe even target a guy in, in day two of the draft there. At, at you the still think position. linebacker is a need? Um, depth wise, I do think it is a need, but I mm-hmm. think I think they'd be fine trotting out Anzalone and, and and Jamie Collins as their kind of two primary guys because I think they're mostly going to be using two at a time there, um, more so than anything. And that depends on what you consider to you know Austin Bryant, Julian Okwara, those guys, edge guys, or those guys linebackers, defensive mm-hmm. ends, whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean. In in terms of off ball linebackers, I think they've got their starters. But if either of those guys get injured, what's the plan? Uh, we we do have a lot of a lot of places that are kind of solid right now. I'm not going to say wide receiver is solid, but we have a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, I mean, wide receiver to, to me is the other huge need because yeah. as, as we talked about, I think like, we need a number one. For, there's no number one for a go off. Right there just isn't. Oh, I think it's going to be more run than pass. I really do. <laughs> yeah. I think um, hopefully they're going to use Perriman as a distraction. And um... <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think right now it's all about kind of making golf comfortable and what he's most comfortable in is, is play action is, he is. is and, he and is. so, yeah, I think running the running game is, is going to be a focus. I mean, you can tell just by the personnel right now, like the running back room is good. Their offensive line is good. Their wide receiver room is not good. Well, what do you do then? Right. Oh. Run the ball. I, I still think the offensive line needs help. That's why I got Slater at either yeah. seven or, or God forbid we have to go back to 15 and then, then do that. We better get a lot of draft picks if we're doing that. Sure. I hate to say that, but, uh, but I, I like Slater a lot. If Sewell, if Sewell would fall, I, I would take him. Ooh. That's yeah. tough to be honest with you. I really like Slater. I like Slater a lot. Yeah. There's a lot to like. So I don't know, but uh, yeah, that that's kind of uh, what I was feeling too about this whole thing. I just like, I like that they're putting out a picture of what they want. Yeah. They're giving yeah. us a blueprint. If you look at it of, uh, of what this future team might look like speedy wide receivers and a lot of uh, deep threat people. And I, I like that. I think that has been missing from the lions for quite some time. Yeah. You know, and and it was the thing that, that Matthew said, one of the first things Matthew Stafford said about coming to the Rams is like, I got Cooper cup. I got these guys that are speedy. They got these guys that can separate. I'm excited for that. And and yeah, I would be too if I was Matthew Stafford because yeah, me too. Guys, you're <laughs> dealing with throwing, you know, lasers into tight windows for, for 12 years here in Detroit. Yeah. Uh, now you might actually have some wiggle room and not have to throw every pass perfect on the dot. One other thing so far out of, out of all the moves and all the things you've seen, is there any glaring things that you think are just like, Oh crap, what the heck did they do that for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Is, yeah. there, is there anything that kind of is a head scratcher so far? Or do you really think, believe in in what they're doing i i mostly do i guess i guess my only question would be with special teams um and 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 i mean special teams is that gonna make or break the 2021 detroit Lions? no but no. um i thought i thought matt prater signed a very reasonable deal i uh, did too and i think the Lions could have afforded it instead they got a guy who can't kick beyond 55 yards which again whatever. It's not that big of a deal, but um, you, you like having that option. Certainly. Um, and Matt Prater gave you this option. This guy that they signed is, is somewhat accurate, but I, I know that fans were happy to see him go from Cincy. So um, it's not great move. Um, they, and they didn't, the thing is they didn't save that much money. I think Prater's getting a 2 million cap hit this year. The guy that they got, who, whose name is, is slipping me right now is, is like one. Yeah. Uh, it, it, is one one Randy Bullock is like 1.4 million cap hit. So like they're saving $600,000 this year, which is again, we had this, we had this thing when uh, Sam Martin left. Yeah. And we thought we don't even, we don't even have a punter on this team. Right. Because we didn't know what Jack Fox was going to be. True. True. And I think that we could pick one. I I hate to say this, but kickers are almost like a dime a dozen. Don't, don't tell Chicago. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think, you know what, we we might be able to find another uh, like undrafted free agent or something like that to come in and compete and whatever. But you're paying him that much money. He's going to be the starter. But how many years was that deal? Uh, the Lions only signed him to a one-year deal. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense to me. And they, uh, they all, I mean, they do have that potential diamond in the rough in Matthew Wright 
on on the yes. roster already. Um, yeah, so. but are you going to carry two kickers? No. Probably. Oh, I've been asking you something because I don't know this, and and you might. Um, sure. Are they because of the seventeen games next year? Are they extending the rosters? I forgot. I, I remember something about that, but I don't know if it's like game day rosters or it's just confusing. To, yeah. Um, other thing that they were doing with the um, practice squad, or that's. Do you know anything about that or not? I it's don't okay if you for, don't. I don't know for certain. I know. I'm pretty sure the 53 man roster is staying 53 man roster. Um, they, I, the, I think a lot of the question is how much of the, the kind of like COVID rules that they had last year mm. are going to stick around this year. And I, I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, I do f- feel like I remember some more, some like bigger game day roster. So instead of the 47, they might have more this year, but I'd have to double check on that. I don't want to mm-hmm. say anything out of turn, so mm-hmm. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, it's okay. I just I just wondered mm-hmm. if you knew it off the top of your head. Okay, now I'm going to go to Lions Trivia, and I'm going to give Jeremy this question. And uh, if you suck at it, that's fine, because uh, it's really, really hard. It's not <laughs> okay. easy. Well, yeah, I'm so going to suck at it then. <laughs> uh, who led the Detroit Lions in scoring for the 2007 season? Now, that's not the question, because that's an easy one. Ah, uh, see, I got gotcha. you. Now, today's <laughs> question is, who was the first Lions player ever? to win the NFC Defensive Player of the Week Award. Ooh. It's in the Ooh, 80s. Yikes. In the, oh, no. <laughs> that is not my air. <laughs> okay. So if you give up, I'll, I'll say the answer. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to give up there. Michael Kofer. Oh, man. I, that is not a name I remember. <laughs> yeah, I, well. it is for me because I'm old as heck. So <laughs> that's it. But the winners today for the Detroit Lions on the Prowl Trivia is Jeremy Graham from facebook and then we have tom braden from uh from twitter okay so i think i said that right um we have too many jeremy's now so we have two <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> but jeremy said let me read this quote he says i'm not sure that i got the right answer which he did which is crazy amazing to me <laughs> um if that's the right answer or not but my brother and i got to meet him when i was 11 and he was eight years old such a nice man. I thought I remember the story where his son played college with F, uh, Florida State University and they didn't tell his son until after the game was over. Oh, that's awesome. That's why he was my guest. And plus, I'm a Lions nerd. Well, we all are, aren't we? <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. So uh, that was the uh, Detroit Lions trivia question for today. We have so much stuff to get to. And, and I'm, I just enjoy talking to you so much. I think that's <laughs> probably a bad thing when it comes to uh, having to get all this other stuff done. So today we have on the wall of fame. And these are people that are members of the Detroit Lions on the Prowl family. And today we have bronze, Northwest Ken, Art Allen, Bubba Bo, Midwest Lion, and Detroit Drew. The silver levels go Lions and no. Gnome is Jay. Gnome is in the building. Uh, Gold is Miles Gibbs. He is not part of the BGs, I asked. Uh, Randy Prince, Dr. Detroit, and the Gridiron Blitz all on the wall of fame today. Now we get to go to your comment cards and see what you had to say. Uh, Let's go to that. Uh, Miles Gibbs. Great show, guys. I like more from Purdue in the later rounds if he's available. He's fast, though. I, I, I do get that real and, he, and they love speed oh, yeah. he's, he's available uh just because you guys said a great slot receiver it could be a possible great returner for kicks and punts possibly thanks yeah i agree with that late round pick i don't think they're going wide receiver at seven i, I don't know but that's just me i think it go two to two to two to three third round somewhere in there sure. there's so yeah. many good talented wide receivers in this draft very deep draft for wide receivers Right. And that, I mean, for that reason, I wouldn't be surprised if they double up because they, they aren't committed really long-term to anybody. Um, certainly on the roster, a bunch of one-term one-year deals. And I know Quinn is Cephas is, is a, a fan favorite there. I'm not sure how much he fits in the lines of current plans. Um, I'm not either. I thought about that too. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he does. I'm just being so, honest. So yeah, they might double up. I know they only have six picks right now, but now, Jeremy's our guest them. today, but he's still doing the show. Like we usually, yeah, do you're putting it, me so. to work. I'm putting you to work. So what do you, <laughs> Got, and I'm giving you the names like Kirk gets. Uh, we, we specialize in botching names on this Ooh. show. So that is our thing. So, so should I try to botch the name? That, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I think you could do it naturally, just like we do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next comment card is from Harpazo Snatched. He says, oh gosh, Omar, got it. Uh, hopefully, uh, Omar Bayless is someone to look in, uh, look for in later rounds at wide receiver. Um, I think he already plays for Carolina. Oh, <laughs> I don't think he's in the draft this year. He sat out um, last year, but I, I I believe he was drafted by Carolina. 
Now, I could have the wrong guy, but um, yeah, he, he, pretty sure he plays for uh, for yeah. Carolina at Arkansas State. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, Mark Stream says all this staff from top to bottom are all about competing. If you think for one minute they're not doing everything possible to feel the team that compete, you're fooling yourself. I don't think I'm fooling myself at all. <laughs> I think they're building a roster that that can go out in the field and they will give a hundred percent. Do I do I doubt that? Absolutely not. But I don't think we're going to be competing as in talking about playoffs, talking about division, talking about those type of things. Competing. As individuals and as a team, yes. Winning, probably not. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you there. I mean, they're they're doing what they can on a budget. I don't I don't think the the plan was ever to be like, hey, we're not we're not even going to try to sign big guys. Or we were or shopping the clearance guys. rack, guys. Just yep. letting you know. <laughs> yep, and that's both out of necessity and smarts, right? And that's why they're it only is. doing these one year deals. This is why that they have to do the golf restructure. It's it's necessity. It's they're they're tight against the cap. And then, I mean, they cut seven guys. That doesn't happen a lot. No, it doesn't. Um, Especially a lot of starters. Yeah, a lot of starters. And and that's <laughs> and people the people that are angry about the Lions, um, you know, not taking their lumps with with the Jared Goff contract. That's where they're taking their lumps. They're cutting a bunch of starters, accelerating a bunch of dead money. They have over forty million in dead money, wow, most in the league. Most in the most league. In the yeah, league. That's that. that's taking your lumps this year. And this, they still had to restructure Jared Goff. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think I think they're they're trying to compete, but they're doing so with you know one and a half hands tied behind their back, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next comment card comes from Randall Flag six oh six. He says, "Jim, you are absolutely right in your assessment of Jared Goff's long ball accuracy. I love Stafford, but he would often frustrate me by overthrowing his receivers when they went long. PFF has Goff's overall." in stride accuracy uh, as almost 8% point percentage points higher than Stafford's. Hopefully Lynn can find a way to take advantage of this. Great show today. Take care. Yeah, I do like his deep ball. I, I think that, uh, and the more I watched it, the more I was like, wow, you know, he's more accurate. He can, he can put it in the bread basket and put it right over the shoulder. Uh, I think he's very accurate when it comes to that. There's other times where he's just I don't know. I don't know if he gets in his head or McVay yeah. got in his head. I don't know what was going on there, but I, I, I do think he has the accuracy though. Yeah. I, th I think you're right. I think, listen, uh, th the one thing that we've learned from Jared Goff is you can win with him. You can, yes. the, the well, Rams can. did it. They made it a Super Bowl. They, they made him a pro bowl quarterback. It's going to take a lot around him. He's going to need a good offensive line. He's going to need some deep ball weapons. Like you said, um, and, and, and he's going to need some semblance of a defense, but um, yeah, you're right. I mean, th there is some inconsistency there. So I think there might be some, some mental things that he went through, whether it was because they went through some offensive line issues because um, that they, they went through some changes at wide receiver or because of Sean McVay. I mean, he has the ESPN article kind of that, detailing yeah. their, their relationship is, is an interesting one to read. And, you know, if a, if a coach is berating you on the sidelines and not coming up to, and, and apologizing afterwards and, and doing it on a weekly basis and, 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 you know, in front of teammates, like, yeah, that'll get to anyone. Like, I don't care mm -hmm. how strong willed your mind is. And, and it, it's interesting because that's one of the things that, that the, the Lions staff came out and said, like, this guy has mental grit. He's got mental grit. I'm not, well, he has to, to be over there and having all that go on. Yeah, oh, exactly. Goodness. And I read that and I was like, wow, you know, and for me, if he has a different, he's a change of scenery and he doesn't feel like he has to be perfect all the time. Cause when you're berated all the time, everything you do, you question in your mind yeah. before you do it. And uh -huh. so when, when you, you're going back to pass. Oh my God. Oh my God. Am I going to make a mistake? I got the, do I have the right read? Am I reading the defense? Right. All this other stuff and all these things that are, are call, that came out about, Oh, you know, McVay ran, uh, called all the plays and, and told them what to do and all that stuff. I don't know. I, I just, all I know is Jared Goff is our quarterback. I think we need to give him a shot. Yeah. Plain and, and simple. And what was one of the first things that Dan Campbell said, you don't need to be the savior. Just right. go out you don't need to be essentially what Matthew Stafford was for the past 12 years, which is the only prayer that this team has. Yes. Just go be a quarterback. Just go be a guy that puts the ball in the right place. Then it's on the wide receivers. Then it's on the defense to stop the other team. You don't need to be like the guy necessarily. Right. And, and call it a game manager, call it whatever you want. They just need a guy who can put the ball in the right place. And Jared Goff, has proven he can got a game guy. manager that's been to the Super Bowl one playoff games and also was the first pick overall in a draft yeah. that Brad Holmes had a lot to do with. Yeah, he's a talented guy. And so I mean I don't I I don't know. 
I think they could win with him going forward and, and, and uh, he might have a pretty good career here. Who knows? But uh, we just don't know what we got yet until we get some actual people in here, which probably won't be for another year or so. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Detroit, the doctor is in. I am not opposed to building around golf in the, in the near in the near future, I think you're thinking. I don't hate golf. I don't love golf. <laughs> I just want to build a team of players who wants to win more than eat, breathe, or sleep. I love that comment. I do. <laughs> you have to build the team around the quarterback. And this is the, the issue that we had because, and I'm going to tell you why this all happened. Uh, it's the rookie salary cap thing. Yep. We had Stafford, we had Calvin Johnson, and we had Indomitian Sue, and they were all signed to like veteran huge deals where it crippled the rest of the, our ability to, to gain pieces around. And we ended up losing pieces. And, and I, I think if we had, drafted Stafford like last year or something like that it'd be, be totally different than it was when we drafted him in 2009 because of the rookie salary cap I think it crushed us I really yeah. do it was it was unfortunate timing like the, it's funny because well, it the, whole, the, lines a lot. the whole system is set up for bad teams to turn to be able to turn things around and in that era that wasn't the case you'd get talented players but they would hand tie you from the get-go from the minute they signed that rookie deal that that was astronomical in terms of um, what it compared to the rest of the league. And so to have three or four of those guys on your team was, I mean, you couldn't, you literally couldn't build a team. And, and yes, they eventually got out of that, but then you're giving Stafford great, you know, big money. You're giving him top yeah. 10 money. You're I mean, he already had money. big money coming in. Yeah. And so it, it was, it was an unfortunate situation. It's probably why yeah. the Lions couldn't afford to keep Sue around and keep that band together and all that sort of stuff. So it, it is the reason why. Yeah, it really is. And then you had Fairley, and I think I think Fairley was one of them that was. Didn't they just start then? I can't remember. It's been a while. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Anyway, there's another comment thing. So we'll yes. do that instead. Uh, let's, let's, uh, <laughs> Turner Burley with the the final comment card of the day says the restructuring of Goff's contract is a sure sign the lines intend to be competitive starting day one. Uh, okay. <laughs> Depends on what you mean by competitive. If you I mean, mean this team is not going to quit. And they're going to fight to the very end. I totally agree with you. Competitive as in making the playoffs or a division. No. Yeah. I, I mean, out, no, the, they can say all they want about retooling versus, you know, rebuilding. And, and maybe there's a little bit of truth to that because you get a guy like Michael Brockers. You, I mean, and you keep a guy like Romeo Quar and, and suddenly that defensive front looks okay. And if, if the coaching staff is as good as everyone seems to think they are, maybe they can turn around the secondary too and, and be an average defense maybe. And, and that's obviously a huge step from where they were last year. And then you have some parts on offense. Um, you have a running game, hopefully, you know, I feel like this is the, the 20th year in a row. We've said, it looks like on paper, the Lions finally have a running I know, game. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, they're also just like huge roster deficiencies at, at wide receiver, at linebacker, at safety that they're, they're going to need to get addressed. And with the players remaining in free agency with the reliance, they would have to take on, on rookies. It doesn't seem like they're set up for success in, in 2021, but I do think they might be a little bit better than, than some people are giving them credit for. And they certainly are going to be a team that, that, that will give you everything they've got every Sunday. I agree. Uh, one thing I was going to say too, is, uh, I don't know why it seems like the Lions are the only team in the NFL that have to have like an, uh, an all-star at every position just to win. <laughs> right. Doesn't it seem like that though? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, and, and I, there's one thing about this season that we all can look forward to, and that is a Jamal Williams press conference and a Dan Campbell press conference. But the yes. one thing I want to see this year is when the refs screw us, not if, but when <laughs> I want to see what Dan Campbell does on the field. And then the press conference, I, th I think, I think Sheila is going to have to have a fund just for him. <laughs> a swear jar. <laughs> He's going to have to have a swear jar. <laughs> I don't mean it that way, but if an official, he comes out and says something about the official, he really does speak his mind. He does. And the Lions do get kind of hosed a lot. So <laughs> I, I'm so looking forward to that. I really am. <laughs> call me crazy but anyway that's gonna we're gonna wrap this up here pretty quick i'm gonna give you my final thoughts for the day first of all i really appreciate you jeremy <laughs> you don't know how much it means <laughs> to me to be able to just say hey what you doing tomorrow at six in the morning you know <laughs> and you're like hey i'm all right yeah let's do it you know thank you very much jeremy sure. for joining me today that's one of the things i wanted to say uh there's a guy that in the comment section also that said uh hey can you shout out the 
Cherokee restaurant. I'm like, yes, I can. Heck yeah. I eat there. Um, that was this here local in Muskegon. And it's just a local like breakfast place and love it. Me and my wife went there and, and ate and all that uh, quite a while ago, but um, cause of COVID and all that, but yeah, I'm going to shout you out Cherokee restaurant here in Muskegon. So that was my little plug. Nice. But uh, Jeremy, final thoughts for today. Um, I guess it's, I, I hate to even use these words because it, I think it triggers so many bad memories, but, um, I'm trusting the process right now. <gasps> yeah, I no, am. I, not the process. <laughs> we, we have to wait and obviously see how the draft plays out. But I think you said it best. Like there's a, there's a plan here. You can see it. You can you see can. the lions basically saying this free agency, Hey, we're not going to go out and make any big splashes because we're not ready yet. We don't have, we, right. have, we don't have the salary cap room. We don't have the, the talent around this, this sort of person. So when they pass on a, a guy like John Johnson, which is a guy that I think a lot of us thought maybe they'd, they'd take a shot at, but apparently I they, they, would. they had no real interest in it's because they, one, they didn't have the cap space Two, you sign them to a three, four year deal. You're probably overpaying in year one and two because you're not contending that much. And then you backload a deal like that. And suddenly you're paying that guy like 15, 20 million, which might be a little bit over his, his price tag. So all these one year deals, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think they're, they're trying to get by with what they can. They're not going to be a great team in 2021. They might not be even be that good in 2022, but the plan is there. The long-term plan is there. And I think that's that's all you really wanted to see out of this team because um, we we it needed a full teardown. It just did. It, yeah, it what, did. What, the the direction they were going again, like you said, Matt Patricia had a clear plan there. It just wasn't working. They were in a tough spot with the salary cap, so they're tearing it all down. They're restarting anew, and um, I, I like what they're doing so far. I think it makes a lot of sense. I like what they're doing too. And I love the trade uh, for Michael Brockers, giving them a seventh round pick the 12th and ever. And, you know, I like that type of thing, but I have to shout out with it. The, the fact that we are, <laughs> we owe Mike Disner a lot. And I do, I, I call it, we're going to Disner land. Every time we restructure, we do something with the cap. That dude has been amazing here. We actually did have cap money to roll over this year. So our number is like 194 million or something this year yeah. where others are 182 or whatever. But uh, I think that the Lions are fiscally being very patient, also very smart. Yep. And I don't, you don't see that from Lions teams very often. So I'm just uh, giving credit where credit's due, you know. 100%. But everybody, if you could subscribe to the channel and like the video, share the video, do all those things that, you know, whatever that you're supposed to do. <laughs> we really appreciate you. For Jeremy Reisman, I'm going to do the thing for Kurt. Let's see if I can do this right. Whatever you do in life. You got to boss up, ball out, and be the best version of you that you can be. For Jeremy Reisman, thank you for being here today, and have a great day, folks.